Hey everybody, welcome back to Shovel Knight with Spiral Sigil. Let's head up into the village here. Alright, now most of the NPCs here you don't really need to do anything with, except for here the Bard and a few that sell things here. So we're talking to the Bard here, he tells you that he's got a simple problem, and that his simple problem is that every one of his fucking music sheets is scattered somewhere else in the world. I don't know how, because you find them in really weird-ass places sometimes, but for bringing them back he gives you 500 gold for each of them. For that, he like, tells you a little bit about one of the songs, whichever first one you give him, and pays you off. Now, there's a couple things you can buy in town here, but I always like to buy my trinkets first. Uh, some of these NPCs here say interesting little things, but you don't really need to worry too much about them until you beat a few of the bosses. The, the witch at the far left will give you your stats, like how much you've dug, how many times you've died, how much money you have, etc. And Mona over here will allow you to play a minigame for 100 bucks, and I really enjoy this minigame. Basically, she'll create things, and you hit those things, and other things. The red ones at the very top are worth the most amount of points. Yellow one's second, blue one's third, and then letting hit the ground is worth no points, obviously. If a flashing beaker starts to fall and you hit it, you actually conjure a few extra beakers, and those are all worth points if they hit anything. So you get massive amounts of points if you can hit, like, multiples of them into uh, the red ones. And, it, like, if you can't go for the red ones, just go for the yellows. At least it's some points, right? If you pass over... I, I don't know what the minimum is for getting uh, the reward for this, or if there's even more than one reward, but the lowest I've ever gotten is 160, so... Yeah, 163. But I know you still get the reward for that, which is some gems and a song. If there is any other rewards for that beyond the song and just money... Someone tell me, because I would go back and play it again. I've only ever do, do it once per playthrough to get the song. There's a second one over here. Uh, fair warning, if you talk to the frog guy over here and hear every single thing he has to say, you get an achievement for that. Chester over here will sell you merchandise both here and in most dungeons. You'll encounter him in a blue chest. Always buy what he has. Most of it you, you really want to finish the game with. Uh, the chaos sphere he sells here, I have no bloody clue what it's actually supposed to be for. And if you talk to the Trupal guy over here, the Acolyte, you can buy one of the cups. Or both, if you have enough, but... One lasts to be the entire game because I didn't actually realize I needed to buy the second one to complete my, uh... Achievement for having every piece of equipment. I thought the last piece was something else. For that, talk to the Goatician. It's a weird title. And ask him for a meal ticket. Buy that, and you can increase your health. Also, on the flip side of that, you can also pay to increase your magic, but until I have about 7 health, I don't bother with magic. I'd rather have the extra points of health. Like, magic magic drops drop from everybody all the friggin' time, whereas you only get a few food items each level. You a salad. And before we leave, there's still one more song we can pick up. Oh yeah, bouncing off this little girl's hoop for five seconds consecutively will also get you an achievement. But, to get the last song, stand on this lady's water bucket carrying device. What is this thing even called? Stand on this, and ride it all the way until she gets over close to the rooftop. So you need to use her as a boost to get up there. And that's what the song and the chest are. Today, woman. Oh, that little dirt pile that's over there? That's nothing, you can ignore that. It, it, the guy beside it will be like, you're not really shovel, I dig this pile of dirt if you are. And that's it. You, you don't have to prove shit to him. Once you get all those, you can leave. Alright, now as promised, I'm going to be tackling the Lich Yard, home of the Spectre Knight first, because I fucking love this stage. I love the music, I love the atmosphere, There's and I love the boss fight. There's only one thing I really don't like about it, but I'll touch upon that when we get there. Now each level has gimmicks, one of this one is the plants. If you flick it with your, uh, your spade, you can bounce off of them to get higher up. You can also ignore these frogs entirely if you just never touch them. Pretty handy. Uh, the ghosts here can't actually be hurt. Fuck you, ghost. Really? I was hitting you first. They can't actually be hurt until far later in the game, but only with an item found in one stage. And the worst part is, it's not even an item you can take with you. Put the bomb over there. Now, I think you can jump at that wall and attack it and still fall into it before it disappears, but I'm not 100% on that. I don't know the skeletons because they don't need anything. Oh, right. So start breaking the checkpoints now, because you get extra money for that. Money him as a boost to get through. 
Something that's ghosty here. No money. There's a skeleton in here. And on the far left hand side, a few more gems. Swing at them to get them to dissipate for a second, so you can continue on. Mini boss time! Uh, I don't even know what we call this, the, the Mega Lich? You can either fight him by uh, having him jump around a lot and then swinging at him, but eventually he'll crumble and you can just do this. Once you get on his head like this, there's nothing he can do against you unless you fall off. So, easy, e he's probably the easiest mini boss in the entire game. I'm, I, like, the dragon's pretty simple too, but the Lich makes himself vulnerable, which is the fun part. The dragon really doesn't, he just starts that way. Ah, fuck you, I totally made that. Fine, I'll wait patiently, you dick. There. Happy now? This is the part of the level, the gimmick of it, that I don't enjoy. Which is the dark part. Because it's very easy to fucking throw yourself into a friggin' pit like this. Just do your best to keep the ghost dissipated and keep it off your back, and then proceed on. But yeah, see how the pits are just obscured like that? That's only the first time you're under that. It gets worse later, too. So the skeletons. That was a checkpoint, so your turkey is right here. And it's also a secret over here as well. Bounce across the tombstones. Well, the weird thing is, I swear to god, I thought I had ghosts spawn when I did that the first time I played this game. So if you ever have that problem, be very wary that when you're going to open the chest, the ghost will float towards you, and they'll attack you when you're in your animation. So as soon as you get out of it, you'll take damage. Be careful about that. Some more dirt piles. We're coming up on the second of what I think is either three or four dark areas in this level. This one is by far the one I hate the most, though. Because it's just stress-inducing because of this friggin' dark area and the goddamn ghost. Where am I? Where am I? Okay, there we go. I'm right in the middle of the platform. I, I always get paranoid about that one. Alright, now we get introduced to the bone elevators, I guess. I, I, if you can think of a better name for them, I'm, I'm all ears. Basically, they'll only drop if both you and one of these skeletons wearing a crown are on it. But, I, I, I don't know. Come on. Hop this way. And die. Good. Spikes, as in any, any old-school NES game, instant contact means instant death, so... You can put them in that. Here's the next part, with a few spike fits thrown in for your inconvenience. I think I got hit there, and I did. Oh well. It's just a little bug asshole, anyway. Just dig your way through once you get up here. If you leave yourself a bit of elevator space, you'll also be able to grab all the treasure that drops there, too. I'm gonna come over here, bring this little bonehead along for the ride. Now the frog down here always manages to hit me. Let's see if I can avoid that this time. Ah, there we go. I did get it this time. Sweet. Fall on the left-hand side of this if you can, and then aim for the middle midway down. Use the skeleton as a boost to get up on the left-hand side, because I don't think you can get into this room if you don't use the skeleton. If you kill him first, you might be fucked. But you can always come back to this item. Chester's here, and the uh, inventory item we get for this one is the Phase Locket, one of the best items in the entire game. Using it makes you invisible and invincible for about a second, but you can go through enemies, traps, and you can even walk on spikes right up until that wears out. Catch. I said catch! And I believe this one on the right-hand side is a turkey. It is a turkey! Yes! Give me the turkey. Alright, bounce off this checkpoint here. For some more money. I want that chest down there, too. I believe that's a song. There we go. You gotta be careful, because like spikes, water is also instant death as well. But if you've played an NES game before, you already know most characters can't fucking swim. Just be really careful when dealing with the, uh... Uh, dealing with the, the skull head things in the elevators. Especially this one here. These, this fucker's got me killed a few times. 
mostly when coming back from the secret area, which is one here and one here. Use that and get the two extra gems that are there. Don't worry, there's nothing else on that side. Cool, that worked. That worked amazingly well, actually. I just decided to see what would happen, wondering if I was going to screw myself over. Alright, anyway. Jump into the middle one here, and you'll fall to the floor. Or yet another... Lich Lord? Big Lich? I, I don't know. Just waiting. Same strategy as before, still works. Just bounce on his fucking head, and he is child's play. Plus, trick for your troubles. Uh, we're just about done this level now. Checkpoint. I think there's still one more dark area to go, though, which is right here. Yeah. And if you didn't die before, this might take you out, too. Just, just go slow. That's your that's easily your best bet here. Just go slow and pay very close attention to what's going on around you. Am I up here? Oh, I am up here. Sweet. Be careful with the skeletons. And you should be okay. You can take these ones, thankfully, you can take it with one hit. I don't trust you. Stay away. Okay. Okay, good. We're out. We're out. I'm happy. I fucking hate that part. And all we've got left is the boss. I'm gonna put this checkpoint here, because I want that money. Now, Spectre Knight, the first time I fought him, I really didn't enjoy his fight. Because he felt like he was fighting you were fighting death from Castlevania. But now that I actually know his pattern, he's one of the most fun bosses, because he's fair without being broken. This is not the place for you or the living mortal. You shall be summoned when it is your time. And everyone has a time, as we saw with your beloved Shield Knight. That's a giant middle finger, isn't it? Lies! I won't believe such talk from phantoms. Your very existence is a vile deception. Yeah. <laughs> The enchanter is just full of surprises. She granted me new life. So that I might take yours! Alright, first thing you want to do is hop up on this platform over here. Jump and swing. So the scythe, move to the right a little bit. You can get two bounces on him down here, usually. Okay, my timing was really off there. Swing again. There's two. There we go. If he jumps, if he swings to the middle like this, you can get another couple of bounces off him before he goes back. If he swings like that, I think he's about to move over here. Yeah. Just move off to the other side when he does that, when he does the lower arm. This, this boss is ridiculously simple, once you learn his pattern. He will eventually start summoning skeletons and make the screen go darker. Don't worry too much about that if you, if you can help it, though. The skeletons he summons will eventually just die anyway. There they are. Get over there. If you uh, went through the king's... The king's level first, you can also uh, use the fire rod from a distance here to kill him. Because he'll go down pretty easily to that, too. He's going to jump across, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Alright, one more. Die! Didn't even take a hit. And then the last skill... Oh, sweet! Gets to the point. And untouched. Wait, untouched? I didn't... I got hit during that stage, didn't I? I'm positive I got fucking hit during that stage at some point. How did I get through with Untouch? I'm not gonna complain about it. I was just positive that I got hit several times. I have to go back and, like, watch the, the playback. Or double-check that achievement. Maybe the achievement just means you didn't get hit during the boss fight. Now I'm not sure anymore. Yeah. Occasionally you'll get uh, nights where you don't actually have dreams about Shovel Knight, which just makes it... Or, Shovel Knight. Dreaming about yourself. Shield Knight. You don't dream about Shield Knight during some nights. Anyway, we got the Lichyard clear. It breaks the lock. And spawns a random encounter on the battlefield there. But the random encounter we'll take care of next time. So until then, as always, leave me a rate, comment, subscribe, a like, anything you want to say. I want to hear it. And stay tuned for more Shovel Knight. Sigil out.